I'm a licensed therapist with a focus on eating disorders, and today we're going to talk about the Minnesota Starvation Experiment and its huge implications for eating disorder treatment. And I'm going to share four of those specific implications with you today. So let's jump in and get started. The Minnesota Starvation Experiment was a year-long study conducted in the 1940s at the University of Minnesota, hence the name. And the purpose of the study was to look at the effects of famine on soldiers during the war. Because keep in mind, in the 1940s, this was the time of World War II. So starvation and other forced atrocities were occurring throughout Europe. And it was clear that there would be a critical need for a large-scale relief feeding. So a man by the name of Ansel Keys stepped up to conduct this study where, yes, he was focused on discovering the physiological and psychological effects of starvation, but more importantly, he was focused on figuring out how the best way to refeed individuals after they were starved. And here comes the interesting part, because before you are able to refeed starving people, you have to starve people. So they recruited 36 young, healthy men, and these men had to fit certain criteria. So number one, they must be in good physical and mental health. Number two, they must be able to get along reasonably well with others. And number three, they must have a true interest in relief and rehabilitation. This starvation study had three phases, and the first phase was the control phase. In the control phase, the individuals ate around 3,500 calories per day, and simply their normal functioning was monitored because they wanted to get a baseline of their normal functioning of these 36 healthy men. The control phase lasted three months. The second phase is known as the starvation phase, and this lasted six months. And in these six months, the caloric intake was restricted to half of their normal intake to reflect the conditions of the war in Europe. So they were fed two meals a day with approximately 1,500 calories per day. And through this, the men lost approximately 25% of their body weight. The third and final phase of the starvation experiment was the refeeding phase. And this is where men were refed to try to get back to their normal weight, their normal functioning. So what did they notice happen when these men were starved for six months? The results were shocking. So here's, here's some of what they saw. Cognitive changes. The men experienced extreme food preoccupation. And what that means is food obsession, constantly thinking about food. They had conversations about food, dreams about food. They would read books about food. They would daydream about food. They would spend the day planning how and what to eat. They experienced impaired concentration when they were watching movies because they would comment on the frequency of food and the eating mentioned. So even watching a normal movie, they were preoccupied with the food and eating shown in that movie. Other cognitive changes they noticed were impaired comprehension, judgment, and alertness. They also found to pick up new habits, such as reading cookbooks and collecting recipes. In fact, three participants even changed their occupations to reflect their extreme interest in food. Three went on to become chefs and one went into the agriculture field. Eating changes were also observed. Men displayed possessiveness over food. They would hoard food. They would worry that others might eat their own food, so they would guard their own food with their elbows. They reported feeling out of control around food. It was reported that they ate food on their plates to the last crumb, and they would even lick their plates clean. Another odd eating behavior was excessive gum chewing. So some of the men would chew two to three sticks at a time until their mouth was sore. In fact, the researchers ended up having to set a limit on the amount of gum or the packs of gum that they were able to chew in a day because of how excessive it was. Others developed tobacco smoking habits because it provided some relief from the hunger. During the refeeding phase, more eating behaviors developed. Men started eating several meals in one sitting and developed GI discomfort and headaches as a result. They also had difficulties in reading their own hunger cues. They felt hungrier than normal. Some binge ate and had purging behaviors. And even after five months of refeeding, they continued these behaviors and eventually developed body image concerns. Now going back to the starvation phase, several behavioral and personality changes were observed. Some of the men would collect food themed items and some of them even rummage through the garbage to try to find food. They developed an extreme distaste for wasting food. Some of the participants seemed to toy with their food. So they would cut their food into small pieces. They would make meals last for hours 
and they did this to try to create the illusion of having more food. There was a great increase in the use of spices and salt to add flavor to the meals. Those who were extroverted in their social life became isolated and they described themselves as feeling socially inadequate. We also saw them become more withdrawn and isolated than in that control period. There was a decreased sense of humor, increased self-criticism, a decrease in sex drive and interest in sex in general, and they struggled to find pleasure in activities that they once enjoyed. Several emotional changes were observed as well. So they reported feelings of guilt and shame. They also saw new anxiety and depressive symptoms that weren't present at the start of the experiment. The men became more sensitive and argumentative, and the only times they showed positive emotional reactions were in response to discussing their weight, food, or hunger. They also saw increased irritability, anger, and apathy. Hygiene was neglected, some psychotic symptoms appeared. Over the first six weeks of refeeding, many men reported feeling even more depressed than when they felt in the starvation phase. Now let's talk about some of the physical changes that were seen. So obviously the weight changed throughout the experiment and the men lost on average 25% of their original body weight. But they also saw gastrointestinal discomfort, dizziness, headaches, decreased need for sleep, edema, anemia, they were pale, hair loss, they were constantly feeling cold, their basal metabolic rate decreased by 40%, and as we've mentioned, their weight dropping by 25%, their muscle mass also decreased by about 40%. There was one man that felt so weak that he wasn't even able to open a revolving door. It took the men two months to two years to fully recover from the experiment. And keep in mind that the starvation period only lasted six months. So if you or a loved one has been struggling with restrictive type eating disorders, anorexia, for more than six months, it kind of gives you a more accurate timeline that this is not going to be an overnight process because there is great effects on the brain and body as a result of starvation. Even though this experiment started to look at the effects of famine on men at war and to learn how to refeed men after World War II, this study ended up having huge implications for eating disorder treatment. And we're gonna go over four of those implications today. Number one, even when the men ate the same number of calories before the starvation period, which was around 3,500, they continued to struggle physically, mentally, cognitively, socially, and many of the participants required significantly more calories than previously thought to restore their weight. So how this plays out in eating disorder treatment is when someone meets with a dietitian, they are often shocked to learn that, oh, you're not just needing to eat the same amount of food as you did before you ever began your limiting your food intake, but you're going to have to dramatically increase your calorie intake. The second implication is that symptoms thought to be specific to anorexia or bulimia are actually a result of starvation. So due to the cognitive impairment that is involved in starvation, it will not work if you just try to address the body image concerns or approach anorexia or bulimia treatment from a completely cognitive standpoint. You must first address the starvation of the brain and body. The third implication is that humans become more oriented towards food when they are starved. Other pursuits important to the survival of the species like sexual, social functioning, those become subordinate to the primary drive toward food. So think about it, if you were to restrict the body's limit to oxygen and its ability to breathe, all other processes would be put to the side and your brain would be preoccupied on we need air, we need to be able to breathe, we are not going to function and last if we can't get this. So you're not gonna be thinking about, mm, what that one person say to me in line or what do I need to go get from the store? No, those are going to be subordinate to the primary goal of getting your body oxygen. And the same is true when it comes to the body and brain being starved. All other aspects are, are put on the back corner. They are not important to the survival of the species because the body requires food to exist and function. And the fourth implication for eating disorder treatment is that this study helped provide some insight into why starvation may be reinforcing for some individuals. It's possible that the food preoccupation that accompanies extreme caloric deprivation is reinforcing in the sense that the individual struggling thinks less about other things in their life that may be stressful. So for example, if parents are going through a divorce, a teen may begin restricting their caloric intake, thus sending their body into starvation mode, which increases food preoccupation and decreases thoughts about the painful separation and fighting that her parents are going through. So starvation of anorexia functions as a distraction or an avoidance behavior. 
This is also what makes recovery scary for some individuals struggling with anorexia because due to the starvation and the food preoccupation, they may have developed a mistaken impression that there's not much that constitutes who they are other than restricting their food. So to increase their food intake may appear to take away who they see themselves as and it can lead to this identity crisis and really wanting to hold on to their eating disorder. This information can help parents who have a child struggling with anorexia understand that their child's behaviors are not due to defiance or being rebellious, but as a direct result of starvation. Well, there you have it. That was an overview of the Minnesota starvation experiment and how it affects eating disorder treatment today. If you or a loved one is struggling with anorexia, restriction, or you're feeling in that starvation mode, please seek help, whether it's a medical doctor, a dietitian, or a therapist, because recovery is possible, and these 36 men in the Minnesota starvation experiment are proof of that.